Dan has just finished this elite caravan uh, upgrade. Well, I'm going to go inside. He's going to tell us all about it. Hey, Dan. Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> As our daughters would say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, cool. So, um, again, this is probably one of those builds that's slightly different to um, what we would probably classify as our, our normal. Not that, man, you know, we have a normal, but um, this one's slightly different in the sense that um, we've done the build under one half of the cafe lounge, uh, which is housing all of the... Um, solar regulators, DC DC chargers, AC chargers, inverter. We'll just um, zoom in and have a quick look. Very so neat. we've got everything in there um, with reference to charging and usage. Um, but the difference with this one is that this actually has a generator box. Well, two rear cupboards essentially there's a generator box on that side um, which is available for storage but this side um, which is the passenger side of the van has a cupboard out the back which has um, adequate space in it for a battery um, so what we've done to meet compliance with AS3001 is actually utilize that space uh, out the back for the battery um, so basically out there it's got a 400 amp hour um, battery plus um, a shunt, uh, isolation and that's pretty much it. And the battery was, the old batteries were in that compartment already out the back so we've maintained that. Um, just from the perspective of um, utilising that space is really nice because it does actually you know really meet the, the, the requirements of the standard um, so we'll go and have a look at that in a minute after we've gone through what we've done in here so this one um, as I said is a 400 amp hour system it's got a thousand watts of solar um, so uh, also two separate strings of um, solar panels on the roof so we've got two 100 watt high voltage panels and four 200 watt low voltage panels up there um, split across two MPPTs um, AC charger 40 amp AC charger and a DC DC charger the DC DC charger as always is cabled out to the side of the van for um, solar input and a 2600 watt inverter so just to begin with this van had two AGMs um, two solar panels on the roof um, and uh, oh that's right I had a manager 30 system in it actually yeah so we've we've removed the manager 30 system from the van as we always talk about it's just not quite um, grunty enough or big enough to, to facilitate this type of system this is quite a substantial um, build so um, yeah we, we pulled that out I believe the customer is going to reuse that in maybe a vehicle of some description, whether it's his or his or you know, kids, something like that anyway. Um, plus the two solar panels were up there were actually Red Arc 180s and we've taken them off and the reason we've done that is to utilise the space a little bit better on the roof because it was, um, this is only an 18 foot caravan um, and it was quite tight up there because they've got quite a number of roof hatches so there's this this random one in the middle there's a there's a large hatch at the front there um, we've obviously got our air conditioner and then in the bathroom there's two hatches either side as well so it was tricky with space in terms of trying to work out you know utilizing existing solar panels which they would have been fine they're good quality solar panels but we've just decided that this particular build to keep things a little bit more simple, we've taken those off. We've um, put four of the same 200 watt panels in parallel on one circuit into one MPPT. So that's just made things a little bit more simple. Overhead cupboard, uh, we've got our um, custom plate with Cymarine and inverter controller. Um, so as always, Cymarine's taking in 
both solar regulators individually. 12 volt loads, DC DC charger, and giving us an overall piece of information. Got an ambient temp, which is out in the box outside, um, and just our general information there. We've got our compliance labels to be compliant with AS3001. Um, I've actually neatened up in behind here because it was, uh, uh, as soon as I pulled the cover off this compartment, it was just uh, a non-compliant nightmare behind there. there so was that's all 240 stuff? 240 stuff, stuff yeah. Mm -hmm. So there was mixed mm -hmm. voltages and open mm -hmm. terminals. and So I've cleaned up all of that. I've made that compliant in the back there as well with some mechanical protection of cables and um, just tidying everything up. And you'll lodge an electrical safety certificate yep. for that because yep. you're an electrician and a... Um Oh, an AC license. Electrical contractor, that's right. So we, um, at as always, at the end of every build that we do, um, you get an electrical safety certificate. We've been doing that from day dot. Mm. Um, because you have to, because you are Because I'm a licensed yeah. electrician and we yeah. are an electrical contracting company as well. Um, to be to maintain our license and registration, we must submit tickets mm. to say that we've done the work. It's safe in accordance with the standard. Um, so that's all part of the deal. So um, what we've done under here as well is because this space under this particular seat is quite condensed, I've added in some ventilation into that as well. So there's a there's a little bit of air movement through there. So I think at this point in time, oh, we've done two Sirocco's as well. So the Sirocco fan in here, um, obviously a Sirocco fan on this side. So that's a nice addition for the living space. This one has been mounted so that it can be utilized um, either bedroom or living area. Um, this one's obviously a little bit further around, so that's pretty much bedroom only. Actually, the other thing that we have done on this particular build is the client has, um, he gave us to install an RV Wi-Fi kit, which is 4G, 5G, but the particular router um, actually has the capacity to take a Starlink dish into it as well. So we've um, on just uh, the the unit is mounted in here. Um, the RV Wi-Fi aerial is on the roof, um, which is another reason why there's space being taken up out there. And on the other side of this wall, we've put a RJ45 pass through for um, for basically plugging Starlink into. So when he gets his Starlink, when they get their Starlink for when they travel, they'll just um, disconnect one half of the cable, put an RJ45 in, it plugs in and, and they're away. The other thing we have done as well is the with the roof space that was available, um, this van had an old um, like swing arm type TV antenna, a wine guard TV antenna, took up lots of space. So we've actually fitted to this probably about here, <laughs> directly above my head, um, a cowfish dome. Um, so they are super easy to install, um, really neat and tidy, take up very little space. Um, they're basically a, probably I would say about a 200 mil um, dome that stick up about probably 300 mil off the roof of the caravan and they just take the coax connector from the old TV antenna into it, rerouted that into there and they've still got TV available when they're... So did you move? Remove the antenna? Correct, TV antenna. yeah. I removed the wine guard TV antenna, which was located over here. Mm. Um, and we've mounted it here. Yeah. The cowfish. Cool. Okay, before we go outside and look at the battery, let's have a. People always ask about um, solar and what, how many amps we're getting in. Yeah. Can I have a quick look at that? It's, um, it is what? 10, is it 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock in the morning. Exactly, it is 10 o'clock. It's an overcast day. I'll just as pick well. outside so you guys can see. It's pretty overcast outside. And let's have a look at what's happening in the solar. Quick run through, and then we'll head outside to have a look at the batteries. So, as we've discussed, we've got two channels. We've got um, 200 watts of high voltage panels coming in on solar one, and we've got 800 watts of low voltage panels coming in on solar two. Now, 10 o'clock in the morning and overcast conditions down here in Duns, Melbourne, um, <laughs> we have not a lot of solar coming in or not as much as what could possibly, it's about 
probably about the same time yesterday, we were about 50% higher than that. So um, yesterday when we were um, testing the air conditioner and all that sort of stuff, we were putting in basically 40 amps into solar two um, and about 12 or 13 amps into um, solar one. So um, yeah, on, on a good day, these guys will peak at about 55 amps of solar recharge from a thousand watts, which is pretty good. Um, it's very good in fact, you know, like, you know, to put that into context, uh, if you use 50% of your battery, the 400 amp hour battery, so you've discharged 200 amp hours out of it, at 55 amps, you're going to recharge that battery in less than four hours. Nice. So you mm. can then reuse, you know, you can then reuse the battery or use the extra energy for doing other things like heating hot water running your air conditioner, whatever you want to do, basically. So things so. that we do, we would heat our hot water off the system during the Correct. day when yep. we've got peak sun. Let's head outside and have a look at the batteries. Right, so as discussed, um, battery box, you can see top and bottom vents. Um, everything meets AS3001. So we've got our 400 amp hour battery. Um, we have nice and tight nice mm -hmm. and tight in there p fits perfectly almost like it was designed for the space um, battery isolator uh, battery monitor so we've got our 300 amp shunt here um, and we've got our isolation and fusing here as well so um, because there's a separation between the seat box and the rear compartment um, it's super important to get cable protection done uh, so all of our cables are when they run outside of the van underneath the chassis and this is something that we do as standard anyway but specifically very important when you're doing builds like this where there is a situation where you've got cables running between two locations and they go underneath the van mechanical protection is super important so that you've got um, the, the cables are protected from rock strike, all that sort of stuff. Um, we also use double insulated cable, which is extra protection as well. Um, so yeah, we've got everything in here that needs to be done. The last thing that the customer has asked me to do is he's got a blackjack electric jack on the front of the van, so your jockey wheel. Um, that had an Anderson plug on the front of it, which he plugged into his Land Cruiser to jack the van up and down which was a bit of a pain in the bum. So we've run a feed out there from this battery. Now just use his jack whenever he needs to off, off the van's battery. Um, so all in all guys, that probably wraps that particular build up. Um, lots of lots of stuff going on in this particular van. So there was there was lots of lots of components that needed to move and install thinking to do, but Pretty happy with the result. It's um, it's a, a really nice system for these guys. Thousand watts of solar, 400 amp hour battery, 3,000 watt inverter. Awesome. Cheers, guys. Any questions? Hit us up.